Hello everybody! Bit of a different start to this one, because I want to show a replay of a battle I had, of which I didn't think was going to be anything special, but ended up actually being a pretty nice battle, and kind of an example of I can only carry so hard. Um, so I'm going to actually have a chance to explain more of what I'm doing, because I'm not actively having to think about what I'm doing. So, basically, how this is starting is I am immediately turning hard right so I can get behind the island in um, E10. I shall put my glasses on. Oh, they're not my glasses. They're... Long story, watch my Animal Crossing videos if you really want to know where I got these glasses from. Okay. So, I'm basically trying to get up behind the island in about E10, D10. That, that sort of area. Because that's a pretty decent island for a light cruiser to be sitting behind. And, you know, it, it, seeing that it's a bot on our side and the enemy team has two player destroyers. I wanted to get into a position where I could support the bot destroyer once it spotted the player destroyer on the other team. That is very much what I wanted to be doing, and what do you know, there he is. Not quite in a position to shoot at him, but now I am. And, guns open. I probably could have shot sooner, but it's fine. Only scored one hit anyway, because these guns are kind of crap. This was also very much a case of, man, I really wish I just had high explosive. Because... Those five overpens were zero damage, basically. It's so painful playing a ship that has regular fused AP against destroyers. And there goes our little buddy. Thankfully, however, that enemy uh, V-170 is not very good. He continues puttering along towards the friendly battleship with a cruiser backing him up. Yeah, and yeah, one pen, two overpens was the same damage as the five overpens. This V-170 would have been long dead if I had had high explosive. Hydro up to assist my friendly battleship because at torpedo angles it would probably spot the torpedoes a bit early. He lives on 169 health because of course he does. There we go. Now, I didn't actually look to see, but my Hydro did seem to detect the torpedo, so I was hoping that the friendly battleship dodged them. I actually don't know if he did or not. I don't tend to look at my teammates very much. You gotta love that little bot wiggle. <laughs> I've only ever seen that from bots, but bots will sometimes just wiggle like that as they drive along. I don't think the game fully knows what's going on there. But I see a juicy Spanish cruiser. And this is a point of swapping my fire from something I know I basically can't hurt to something I know that I can. And I'm basically just trying for soft angled broadsides. Because if I get lucky enough, I can start scoring some citadels and thus start killing these guys just that little bit faster. I know Agano has a pretty weak set of armor to it, so I swapped to it. And don't really get rewarded at all, but hey, it's still kind of angled. This AP should have improved pen angles. Don't know if it actually does. It should have it, but you know. As it comes closer and drives more forward, the angle is softening. So more and more of my shells have a chance of scoring citadels and then he turns and then he turns that little bit he should not have turned that little bit <laughs> and then he turns more i don't understand i end up getting complete overpens looking at the hp on that carvor it probably ate torpedoes 
Because there's almost no way it took all that damage from shots. And then, of course, my guns start to troll me. Because, of course, they would. This line is just painful. Even the death of it was four overpens. I don't like these cruisers. But, hey, I'm already up over uh, 34,000 damage. So, you know, it's pretty nice. Get more shots off at the, uh, the Konigsberg, Scory Citadel, because that thing has paper for armor. Um, that was just shots into the rock, but let's be real, the island indicator is not reliable, so sometimes you just gotta take the shot. Um, there's finishing him off. There's probably some torpedoes on the way, but he was seven kilometers, and his torpedoes only go, um... Six. So as long as I don't push out too quickly, I'm fine. And here we have a player Konig and a bot Wyoming. I focus in on the Konig because you would. The Konig is a player, the Wyoming is a bot. The whoop the Konig is the more dangerous target. And ow. Perfectly angled to that that Konig doesn't matter. Overmatch says that doesn't matter. But, hey, I keep firing at him anyway, because, hey, maybe I'll get some damage. Two overpens, two non-pens. Ow. And that wasn't so bad. Two pens. Get lit on fire by the Izuzuchi, because it's clearly never heard of armor piercing. If it had, I'd be in real trouble here. Now I'm just trying to get behind the island enough that I'll go undetected because I knew the Izuzuchi was out of my gun range. Now I'm staying quiet a little bit because the Izuzuchi is about to enter my gun range and I know it. And it's in my gun range. So if I were to fire now, I'm spotted. Using the torpedo indicator to see where the Konig is going. Sees that the Konig is not actually aiming even towards me anymore, so I take some more shots at him. Deal no damage again. Now, at this moment, there is an Oklahoma pushing into our cap circle. Because the team everywhere else on the map has basically fallen completely apart. And I'm dealing with these crappy little guns trying to take on this Konig. If I was in another ship, this probably would have had a very different outcome to this battle. I've kind of already given it away that this is a loss. But it is a pretty nice loss. Pretty decently hard fought battle. I got an Orion behind me that I really wish wasn't behind me. I wish he would be the one to push out, but... I've probably got shots on the Wyoming, so... Well, at least that Wyoming. I think that is the Wyoming. Yeah. So, you know, I'm taking some shots at it, maybe get a little bit of damage on it. It's a tier 4, I have a much higher chance of actually damaging it. And I'm waiting for that Konig to get just a little bit closer. And about here is where I make this decision of, I have torpedoes. He is coming very close. I can use this island to get even closer to him. The torpedo angles suck. Again, if I was in any other cruiser... This probably would have gone very differently. And I'm very much glad that in this moment... I reached the threshold of not my problem for HP. The Konig sees the Izuzuchi also shooting at me and decides, not my problem. <laughs> Also, see how close and accurate I have to be to deal damage to this guy? I'm non-petting him at, like, less than two kilometers. And I leave him on such low health. Here, I should have led the torpedoes a little further forward. Or, it's backwards, no. A little further back, because that's a bot. It's gonna slow down. But, it's fine. Torpedoes. Now, I already know this Izuchi is firing high explosive, 
so I should have just went full on broadside, but I had the thought in my head of maybe he'll load the, uh, maybe he'll load the armor piercing if I do, and then I'm just like, nah, you know what? Here I lead ahead because it looks like he's about to continue turning. Completely missed the Wyoming because it slowed down. Love this armor piercing. I can't do anything to this Isuzuchi. It's great. Fire my heal off the absolute moment I can. And there I get some good damage. And there goes the torpedoes into him. Completely taking him out of the equation. More torpedoes out at the Wyoming. And now I notice the Oklahoma's looking at me. And... Here, I should have hard turned left the moment I noticed he was looking at me. But my thought was, maybe I can get to this island before he can shoot, and nope. That was a citadel through my angled armor, because overmatch. And then right there is my confederate high caliber to go with the devastating strike, Kraken Unleashed. Was not much more I could do to carry this battle. At this moment, it is now in the hands of my teammates. I wonder if I can... No, I can't take control. It's still old me. I know there's ways of free camming. I don't know how to free cam in... Uh, in this. The Furutaka's torpedoes miss. Probably because I caused a flood and slightly changed the speed. The Furutaka here seems to forget that Nicholas is a destroyer and is about to eat some Nicholas torpedoes. Because if you can see the Nicholas, it can torpedo you. Um, it actually has to be seen to torpedo you. But, uh, you know, this Furutaka should really be turning towards the Nicholas. And isn't. Because right about now-ish is when the torpedoes... Yep, there they are. If he had turned a lot sooner, he would have dodged those, killed the Oklahoma, and then it would have just been the Nicholas and a bot Wyoming against the, uh, the Orion. And right there, I basically just quit out, but yeah... I couldn't really carry that much harder, but that's just kind of what happens, and most of the players, most of what I damaged was players. So, yeah. Sometimes it's just what happens. I just felt like showing this battle off because this is a pretty nice battle, and now I'll meet you guys back in the port screen because, you know, that's just how this stuff works. You have to... This is its own client of warships. It's weird that way, but yeah. Meet you guys back in the port. Welcome to the Wargaming Wiki page. Now, we're, we're starting with this purely because I was just watching a video that gave me the thought of, man, a lot of people really don't understand how fire chance works in this game. They have a whole how it works video on it that you can, you can see on the side of the, the page there. You can go and watch that, or you can watch this, which will also more or less summarize it, but probably a fair bit faster. So the thing that matters is this fire coefficient down here. That I don't know if you guys can see my cursor. I'm not currently clicked into my Firefox, so you guys can hear the pleasant dock music from World of Warships. Case in point, if I can blow my horn right now. Now, there are some things to note here. One, carriers always have a 0.8. And tier 10s have two, uh, two listed, but they only have one hull. As far as I can figure, a tier 10 always operates under the B hull. I could be incorrect on this. It doesn't change the math too much. Against a tier 10 ship, take your fire chance, cut it in half. That's your actual fire chance. So if you have a 10% fire chance shooting at a tier 10, like let's say a Montana, 
you have at minimum, well at maximum really, a 5% fire chance. There is then fire prevention that can lower that by 10%, so now you're down to 4.5. Then you take that 4.5, and if they're running the equipment to reduce your fire chance again, that's another 0.5% resistance. So that lowers you to roughly 4.3, I think, somewhere in that range. Your fire chance is a lie. That, that is that is what I am telling you here. They have this whole calculation you can do. It's so much easier than following this whole formula. You know the coefficient. Just take the coefficient. And get that out of the way. Take that off your fire chance. Then you do 10%, then 5%, and you're done. Because some of what that, uh, that formula is calculating for is things like if you're running IFHE, are you running the fire chance flags? Are you, you know, if you're running those, just take your fire chance, do the coefficient. So that's the percentage of damage you'll, you know, percentage of fire chance you've still got left. You know, against tier ones and twos, you have all your fire chance. Against an A hull tier three, you have all your fire chance. Um, against a tier ten, you have half of it. You know, I guess the ships that matters the most that they, you know, they, they have the most health can take being set on fire a few times. So kind of meant for taking damage, have a lot more armor and are harder to kill with fires and high explosive. Yeah, those are the ones with the most fire resistance. Other than carriers, carriers are just screwed the whole way. They, they get a hull tier six the entire way. So at tier, you know, four, they're more resistant to catching on fire than other tier fours but that's really about it um yeah fire chance is kind of bullshit <laughs> and now i shall do a cut for flooding chance because i have a feeling i didn't show this stuff but i already have this set up so i may as well do it so jump cut all right we're back on flooding this is one i would highly recommend go watch the video they're probably going to explain this a lot better than I can because this is a whole lot more complicated. Namely down to, you know how we had that big chart of all the fire coefficients? Yeah, they haven't given us that for ships. There is one, but it hasn't been updated in so long. Most ships aren't on it. And it was ship by ship. So we don't have the base flooding chance. But... We do have the data for every single torpedo, and this more or less goes to show why I don't value the flooding chance flags. Keeping in mind, those are like 15%, 25% even, I think. I don't know, it's a lot. It makes it look like it's worth a lot, but, you know, by Clemson, you're at 192% flood chance. Um, let's let's come down here a little bit to, uh, I mean, Anchorage, Fletcher, Valos, Gearing, Austin, 323%. Half Ford, uh, 323. The submarines have a pretty low flood chance. You should take it on submarines. Um... But even like Umikaze, 107%. Um, Watatake, 145. Yubari, Furutaka, Hatsuharu, Fubuki, 240. Uh, Yahagi, 287. You know, Hatsuharu upgraded. Shiratsuyu, Akatsuki, and Miyoko stock, 269. Like, these flood chances are ludicrous. You really think adding that a few extra percent is going to help? Like, it's really not outside of submarines, which we have a lot of data for Russian submarines. Can you guess what's in the game, just not available for testing? Um, they've been in the game since the initial uh, submarine tests. There is one thing outside of submarines that the flood chance is useful for, and that is carriers. Because these torpedoes have painfully low flooding chances. Ize's torpedoes are a 17%. So it's not a bad flag to run on, Ize. 
because you're actually, you're more than doubling your flood chance. With a lot of these, you're just about doubling your flood chance, which is pretty nice. Or at least adding about 50% more. It's it's really nice, but yeah, th those flags don't really do a huge amount once you know all this stuff. And there's, there's so much to flooding. I mean, they go over how much damage you'll take to a flood. It's kind of ludicrous. <laughs> But yeah, let's let's get out of all this teachery stuff, and let's hop over into some actual games, shall we? In the news, I don't know if this will still be available when this is uploaded, because this only lasts until the 24th, but we get a rental Wichita, which is pretty nice. Comes with a 10-point commander. I'm hoping we get to keep him because that's what I'm grabbing this for. That should give us the rental Wichita and a 10-point commander. Which basically means... Oh, I think he is also on rental. Oh, Is he? Yeah, he's on rental. New. No. Oh, well. We still have Wichita for a few games. It's not many games, but we do have her for a few games. So, I mean, we may as well get some use out of her. I mean, she's not a bad ship, so... I do kind of want to go with that. Eh, I don't really need the four radars. Adrenaline rush. I mean, heavy AP would probably serve us better. But we're going to use her to make some silver. That's what we're going to do. Because we can pop in here and we can throw this booster on. And then we can hop into operations. So. Or I could hop into randoms, I suppose. I feel like randoms would be more reliable. But this will probably give us a chance to see some higher tier operations. So we're doing we're doing it this way. Wow, that was insta-pop. Okay, I was expecting to have to cut, make a cut there. And what we get? Killer Whale. Alright. I think we've had this op before. Not at this high of tier. This would be probably a tier 8. Yeah, this is full tier 8s. So there should be a lot more damage going around. And this will also be a ship I'm going to be a lot more comfortable with. This is also our first instance of a ship with a radar! It's so nice. I didn't throw any equipment on here because I don't care enough. Um, but you can actually get the concealment down to 9.5, basically. Somewhere in that range. 9.5, 9.6. You really want to be doing that so that you can get closer to your radar range because it is only 9, but... I really don't care enough, so... I mean, part of me almost feels like I should throw a Dispersion mod on, but it's not really needed, so. Got all of them non-pens that deal damage. <laughs> Get my guns traversed around for this fort. I should actually load AP. I'll deal more damage to the bunk- the forts. The bunkers. The Borts. Okay, that one's just down. Okay. Someone knew to load AP, and I think it was the Cleveland. <laughs> we basically have Cleveland radar. Which is kind of nice. We do also have improved pen angles on this AP, so... That is also pretty nice. Also, that Nuremberg has as much health as we do. Um, that's just kind of funny. Here's the point where I really should have the high explosive loaded, but... It still works. This is basically a Baltimore, so... You know, the... The, uh, the middle tier, uh... American heavy cruiser that's actually worth playing. 
It doesn't quite have Baltimore's AP shells, sadly, but they're good enough. And bonk. I'm gonna swap to the AP. Ironically, watching a video on this ship is what made me go, yeah, I should probably, like, explain how fire chance works for people. What's behind me? Oh, it's the hipper. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because, like... Seeing people not understand fire chance... Tell me that uh, a lot of people probably just don't understand fire chance. Which is fine. Like, it's not a mechanic that's, like, shown to you. So, you know... I cannot blame people for not understanding it. Hey, we could actually use this tier 8 to get into mode shuffle. <laughs> Play around in there. Probably wouldn't be a terrible idea either. But operations, especially if we get ones like this one, are pretty safe bets for making silver, so... This is really nice of Wargaming to do, by the way. Like, they don't always do rentals, and it's almost always American ships, but... There's nothing wrong with American ships. They tend to be pretty comfortable gunboats. Decently well armored. Like, at this kind of angle, that Bayern cannot really hurt me with its armor piercing, so... And I can probably hurt it with mine, so... Man, if the exit ends up being in the north... Those battleships are going to be feeling pretty silly. Yeah, I'm still non-petting a lot, but... It's working out. I was really hoping you'd get to keep the 10-point commander, though. <laughs> that would have been really nice. I also forgot to change over to Hydro. Doesn't really matter, but... Bonk. Bonk. Now there's almost certainly torpedoes on the way for me, so... Shot set at that Baron. We need to get destroying base structures. So I'm gonna turn towards the army depot, I suppose. Because the Iparanga secondaries are taking care of the warehouse. Maybe. Well, if they don't get it, my guns will. Okay, they got it. Get those. Because the objective is complete once we sink these two battleships, so... Oh, I'm not locked onto the Baron. Whoops. Well, still hit him. Now, some of the secondaries on this thing are actually improved. Like, they have improved dispersion. I don't know which ones. You shouldn't build into secondaries anyway. <laughs> not on a ship like this. At this kind of range, I, I should not be. Like, that's, that's the best way to put it, is I just shouldn't be at this kind of range. Um... Uh, 
That'll be that army depot. Then we just gotta burn down the, uh, the Niza now here. Who, of course, damage controlled the single fire. Maybe I can get another one lit, though. I do have a pretty decent fire chance, so... The chance is there. I'm gonna miss having this thing once it's gone, but... There's another fire. There is no one in a position to head north. That should probably be me. I mean, the Kagero is facing north, but... Yeah, we need someone in the north, like, right now. Where's the exit? Please be in the north. Because I really... Don't want to be where the exit isn't. Um, where is the exit? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's not in the north. Crap. There's going to probably be a battleship in the north. Why? It's nine kilometers, my guy. You're not seeing crap with that thing from back there. Well, let's push up to the north. I'm gonna have a gun emplacement, as well as, um... Probably a battleship to deal with. I will ram it if I have to. Um... I've not gotten the most amount of damage, but... I haven't had the most opportunities to get damage yet, so... Oh, one of our Kageros is already dead. There's one of the battleships. Fury. Has 70,000 health. Alright, Barangas got that. Ah! <laughs> yeah, look at him, he's already firing. Good boy. Um... Really wish Wich Wichita had torpedoes. I mean, it's a one-of-one one series. I mean, come on, they could have slapped torpedoes on this thing. There's plenty of deck space that could have done it. Like, right where that 1AA gun is, or right where the escape boat is, you don't need one of those. Just slap a dual torpedo launcher. Heck, get rid of the catapult here at the back, and just put some torpedo launchers right on the rear. That would, that would do a lot of good. This Nuremberg is just broadside to me. Okay. We'll take it. I will definitely take it. I'm gonna put out that fire. I probably shouldn't have, but I'm gonna put it out anyway. Bong. Okay. Yes. Thought so. I thought it did so. I wish I had a ramming flag on. <laughs> because that's going to be my most reliable way of dealing with a bear and is just ram it. Hey Cleveland, you were helping before. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, he's turning. That 
will help me a lot. I mean, I'd love the fires, but... Ow. My secondaries can get me those. I overpenned and non-penned. And now he's turning back in. Bugger. There we go. There's my armor working. Yay, our little buddy got a fire. Yay, I got a fire. And it shot up into my superstructure. Kinda tempted just to go for the ram. But... That is a battleship, so I don't know if me ramming it would actually cause enough damage. And I can probably win this gunfight, so... Yeah, I can definitely win this gunfight. Uh, what is the thank you button? F12. May as well pop this fort. Oh, never mind. May as well dance for some torpedoes. No, you don't. You don't get to go unspotted. <laughs> Man, gotta love destroyer damage saturation. I think he took less damage with every shot. <laughs> oh, there's another fort right there. I forgot about that. I'm not too concerned with staying alive. I'm just after some more damage and ribbons. Ow. I'm now proxy spotted by the fort. <laughs> I didn't know they could proxy spot you. That's kind of neat, actually. I'm overpenning his citadel. There we go. He said to give me a bit of angle. Bit of angle for my dangle. Can I live this? Yes, I can. Ramming speed! <laughs> Damage! <laughs> I wasn't getting out of that alive anyway. <laughs> oh, guys, don't get too greedy. Don't get too greedy, guys.
Come on, guys. Don't get greedy. Only one of them needs to get into F1, I think. They're gonna throw. Oh no, they're gonna throw. And the Cleveland make it in two minutes. Uh, greed is probably going to cost us. If the Zetan had just stayed in the exit. I don't. I don't like teammates. If this Cleveland dies, we lose. There is now a Bismarck to his side. And I don't think he's noticed yet. Doesn't really matter. He has to make the straight beeline for the exit. Thankfully, the Bismarck is not paying attention to him, but he still has to be aware of destroyer torpedoes. And he has a minute to get to the exit. Now the Bismarck's paying attention to him. That Zeton tried really hard to throw. Come on, little Cleveland, come on. Yeah, no, please just go dark. Don't get greedy. Please just go dark if you can't you can't go dark. Crap. He's right there. He's not going to make it. That Zeton through. That sucks. Wait, how did one get into the Haven? That sucks so much. That could have been such a nice win, but no. Hey, we completed part of the late golf missions. We have some containers. Yeah, let's... We got two of them. Let's come and see what we get. Economic bonuses? Cool. And economic bonuses. Hey, I'll take it. That sucked so much. Now I think we need spotting damage. Um, it's not that one. It's this one. Yeah, now we need spotting damage. This is gonna take so long to do. Maybe. We ain't gonna be doing it in Wichita, that's a- that's for sure. You know what, let's hop to randoms, because I feel more confident that we'll actually get something going on here. That sucked so much, though. This has been a long episode already. I think I'll do some randoms next time. So, thank you all very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you back here next time for more World of Warships.
See you then.